your adaptive immune system involves a couple of kinds of lymphocytes. And these lymphocytes are T and B cells, which when they are mature, have antigen receptors on the outside of their plasma membranes. And these antigen receptors have a very particular shape that will bind with a particular antigen. An antigen being a molecule that's sitting on the outside of the plasma membrane of some pathogen, a bacterium or a virus or something like that. And these will bind with very specific antigens uh, and they will only respond to antigens that, that, that match up. In other words, maybe this T cell will respond to the H1N1 flu virus, but not the H1N3 flu virus or something like that. B lymphocytes specifically make antibodies, which are also called immunoglobulins. Globulin is a, a shape of a protein, and they're, these particular globulins are used for immune response. So immunoglobulins or antibodies are secreted, and they have the exact same shape as the antigen receptor did on the B cell, so they will attack the same antigen. For instance, this B cell, right, happens to have an antigen receptor that matches up with uh, this antigen, and specifically this epitope on the antigen. Antigens will often have multiple different binding sites, but it matches up with this antigen epitope, and then that activates it. And when it activates, it makes lots of copies of itself, and the copies are either memory cells, which live a long time and look out for that virus or bacterium to ever attack again, uh, or plasma cells, which are full of rough endoplasmic reticulum and just make antibodies. And the antibodies, again, look just like these antigen receptors. Those antibodies will then bind to the antigens on uh, other uh, pathogens, other, other examples of the same pathogen, right? Um, that, that virus or bacterium or whatever you're responding initially to, it will go out and find them and bind to them and mark them for destruction. So B lymphocytes or B cells make antibodies. T lymphocytes or T cells are in charge, specifically helper T cells, of chemically coordinating your immune response. So they're very important. They're like the generals on the battlefield of your immune response. And they um, will become activated when um, a macrophage that has eaten up uh, one of these pathogens uh, and taken its antigens and displayed it in its little major histocompatibility complex, which is like a frame that it puts these antigens in, it, it will eat whatever it eats, display the antigens, and then show these antigens to T cells. And if it finds the T cell that has a receptor that matches up to this particular antigen, right, to that epitope, then this T cell will become activated. And it, just like the B cell, will begin copying and copying and copying itself. It will make some memory cells that are long lived. And again, will respond quickly to a second infection from the same uh, type of pathogen. And some cells that are gonna be active now, and they, instead of making antibodies, are going to make chemicals that rally and organize your immune response. Both B and T lymphocytes are born like all blood cells in your red bone marrow. But when they're born, B cells remain in the bone marrow to become mature, T cells mature in the thymus, hence the T, right? And when I say mature, I mean get those antigen receptors. When they're first produced, they don't have antigen receptors. And then after they get their antigen receptors, they have to go through a negative selection process where they get tested for self-tolerance. Essentially, are they going to respond to any of your body's antigens? You don't want them to. Because if they respond to your body's antigens, they will attack your own body cells. So any uh, T cells or B cells that are not self-tolerant, that respond to your body's antigens, are destroyed. And then after that, they are sent out into your bloodstream. Um, they are mature at this point, but they're not activated until they um, come into contact with the antigen um, that has the appropriate shape to bind to their antigen receptor, right? Once that happens, they're activated, and that's when they copy and copy and copy themselves. Uh, and then both of these will provide you with an immunological memory. That means that when they copy and copy and copy themselves, some of those cells are long-lived memory cells that will stick around and will respond quickly to any subsequent infection um, with, with the same pathogen. And this is why you become immune to something, right? You get chicken pox once and you have symptoms because it takes a while to beef up your response, it takes a while for your B cells to become activated and make antibodies. But once they do, if you ever get exposed to chickenpox again, you already have lots of B cells and T cells that will fight off that chickenpox virus.
And so you are essentially immune because of these memory cells. That's one of the things that scientists and researchers are looking for in people that get, uh, you know, a COVID vaccine. Does that COVID vaccine not only produce antibodies right away, does it produce B and T memory cells that'll stick around a while? So because of these memory cells, the first time that you get exposed to a particular antigen, we'll say antigen A, it takes a while before um, you are able to have your T and B cells find the antigen, right? Because you, your T and B cells only respond to one particular antigen. So the first bunch of, uh, of T and B cells that this antigen happens to bump into are not going to be the right T and B cells. So they're not going to be activated. You have to activate the right one. Um, once you do, it takes a while to copy and copy and copy themselves. It takes a while to produce antibodies. So it's close to the end of the first week before you start making antibodies. Uh, and it's two weeks, essentially, before you've peaked out with your antibodies. This is why when you get a new virus, it usually takes a week or two to feel better, right? A week to 10 days, right? At this point, you're probably going to start to feel better because you've got a lot of antibodies. But if you ever get that again, right, let's say at day 28, you get exposed again. Almost immediately, you start making antibodies because you have a lot of memory cells that are floating around your body waiting to see uh, waiting to be exposed again to this particular pathogen. Your body knows it's in the environment, knows it could be a threat, so you have lots of cells waiting for it. And you don't just make a few antibodies, you make an overwhelming amount of antibodies. And when that happens, it happens so quickly and so forcefully that you probably won't even realize you got infected. That's what it means to be immune to something. It doesn't mean you can never get exposed to something again, but it means your body will respond so quickly that you'll never get an appreciable amount of virus or bacterium in your body. But let's say you got exposed to A and B on the same day. This new infection you've not been exposed to, so it's going to take that week to 10 days to start feeling better, right? Um, and so it, your, your primary immune response when you first encounter something takes a while. Your secondary immune response, the second time you've uh, been exposed to something, right, then you get an almost immediate forceful response. That B cell mediated antibody response is called your humoral response. Uh, humoral refers to the antibodies in your body's fluids, and B cells are in charge of that with the help of some T cell organization. But your cell mediated immune response has to do with specialized T cells that actually physically attack and destroy host cells. So rather than just making antibodies that mark them for destruction, they will go after and directly destroy host cells. Both types of responses, humoral with your B cells and cell mediated with your, your different kind of T cell, both are, are triggered by helper T cells. Helper T cells, again, are the, the generals that, that organize the battlefield. And they are um, activated, again, by antigen presenting cells. So macrophages that have eaten something and have, have presented that uh, to the helper T cell. So your, your pathogen is eaten up by a macrophage or an antigen-presenting cell that will present that antigen to the helper T cell. And if it's the right antigen, that helper T cell will then make copies of itself, but it will also activate two different kinds of cells. It will help activate B cells to make antibodies, humoral immunity, and it will activate cytotoxic T cells to go fight off um, this pathogen. Or if this is a virus, it'll go fight off your own cells that happen to be infected with that virus. How does it fight off those cells that have viruses? Well, it will bind to that cell. It will recognize the antigens, again, in the MHC, because all of your cells have MHCs that give a, show a portion of your proteins. And if they are the viral proteins, it will then produce perforins, which are proteins that make little per, uh, holes, perforations, in the plasma membrane of your infected cell and destroy it before your infected cell can serve as a site where more virus can be produced. And so these cytotoxic T cells, which literally means like cell death T cells, um, destroy your own cells. So cytotoxic T cells are your, your, your cell mediated response. Your humoral response has to do with B cells, but your B cells have to be activated by a helper T cell before they start um, copying themselves and making plasma cells that will make antibodies and memory cells that will stick around and protect you for a long time. And we've been talking about antibodies, like once they're produced, this is just over, right? Uh, they will take care of the pathogen. And how do they do that? Well, they do it in a few ways. They will bind to the pathogen, and that does a few things. 
One, it, it neutralizes them. It makes it harder for a virus to enter your cells if its antigens are blocked up by these antibodies. Then they, they can't bind to your cell's membrane and, and get themselves inside. So they're neutralized. It also uh, causes something called opsonization, which is where they allow macrophages to better grab onto them and eat them. It marks them for destruction. It puts a tag on them that says, here, come eat me, and then it makes them easier to eat uh, for your macrophages. It also stimulates something called the complement system, uh, which causes inflammation, brings more white blood cells, and again, causes them to be destroyed uh, in a similar way to what we, we talked about with the cytotoxic T cells. So once you start producing a lot of antibodies that specifically mark the cells to be destroyed, those cells can be destroyed pretty quickly. Now you can get um, adaptive immunity either actively or passively. Actively means you make your own antibodies uh, and develop your own memory cells. Passively means you get antibodies from somebody else, right? So active, you're making your own antibodies, and that can happen either naturally, meaning you got infected by the virus or the bacterium, and you had your own primary immune response and you made your own antibodies. Or it can happen artificially through vaccination. And vaccination is where essentially uh, scientists, doctors will trick your body into having a primary immune response when you never actually got infected. They will give something to your body, inject it into your, your body that looks like the virus, or it might be a dead or inactivated version of the virus, but your body treats it like the virus. Um, has a primary immune response so that if you ever do get infected with the virus, your body treats it like a secondary immune response, which we saw earlier, means that you react almost immediately, you produce way more antibodies, uh, and you are essentially immune to that thing. So that's active, uh, artificial would be vaccination. So if active is where you make your own antibodies, passive is where you don't make the antibodies, you get them from somebody else. This can happen naturally across the placenta, Right? If, if you are a mother and you have its fetus developing in your placenta, you give that fetus your antibodies to protect it. And then after birth, through your breast milk, you're also giving your infant your antibodies. So the infant's not making those antibodies. It's passive immunity, but it's natural because you're giving them to them. You can also have artificial passive immunity where a doctor injects a bunch of antibodies in you. Uh, and this is, for instance, what the president was getting um, when they talked about monoclonal antibodies in the White House, he was getting artificial antibodies that were being injected into him before his body could make them on their own. Your immune system is not perfect. Things can go wrong. And sometimes your immune system responds to things that are inappropriate to respond to, or maybe they're, you know, threats, but, but we respond in an exaggerated fashion. So something like hay, pollen, uh, is, is not a threat. That's an inappropriate immune response if we respond to it. Uh, or something like bee sting toxin is a threat, but it's not a big threat. And so if you have a huge response to it, that's inappropriate. We call those inappropriate or exaggerated responses allergies. And those can cause inflammation when you don't want inflammation. And sometimes they're localized and annoying and they cause you to sneeze or get a bump. But sometimes they can be systemic and they can cause uh, your blood pressure to drop or your throat to close up and, and then you, you might need epinephrine. Sometimes your immune system is not self-tolerant, meaning it will attack your own body's tissues. We call these autoimmune diseases. Things like rheumatoid arthritis are uh, where your body's immune system attacks the connective tissue in your joints. Uh, diabetes mellitus type 1 is a situation where your body attacks the cells in your pancreas that make insulin. Multiple sclerosis is an example. There are lots of examples of diseases that are autoimmune, meaning your body's immune system is attacking your own tissues. And sometimes instead of being overactive, your immune system is underactive. You have immunodeficiency, which means your immune system is not working properly. And the most common kind of this is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, and that's caused by the HIV virus. And here, the virus attacks your helper T cells, which are the generals that organize your immune response. And so when they kill those helper T cells, your immune response becomes very insufficient. And people don't technically die of AIDS. What happens is you die of other opportunistic infections or cancers that you would otherwise be able to fight off, but you can't because your immune system is compromised. And here is a look at how your helper T concentration goes down as your relative HIV concentration goes up over time.